Okay. Um, so just again, um, this is Olivia from Humor Beats Cancer, a nonprofit um, that is geared to those with cancer, um, adults with cancer, particularly those in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. And so we're here with um, Matthew Heineman about um, American Symphony, um, his new uh, film that is out on Netflix. And so um, welcome, Matthew to the, um, you know, the conversation. And so if you could just kind of describe, you know, maybe do a little elevator pitch about yourself and then just tell um, a, a quick summary about the movie. Um, I'm not great at the elevator pitch, but I, yeah, I'm a documentary <laughs> filmmaker. I've been making films for two decades or so, a whole variety of topics from, uh, you know, following vigilantes fighting the drug cartels in Mexico to journalists, fighting ISIS in Syria to front lines of COVID during the first four months of COVID in New York to end of the war in Afghanistan. So most of my work has been in conflict zones and other places. Um, and so this is definitely a, a bit of a departure for me. Mm -hmm. um, and the film is, yeah, documenting the musician John Batiste and his uh, wife, Suleika Jawad, who's a you know best-selling author. And um, right as we started filming, John got nominated for 11 Grammys. And to like it got re-diagnosed with cancer. And so the film sort of documents this, you know, very challenging period of their lives uh, as they both navigate these these highs and lows that they were uh, confronted with. Yeah, there were so many amazing moments in it where it showed that juxtaposition of to be as high as possible in terms of like in your career, you're doing so well. And then for um for uh John's wife and it's Sulaika. Am I saying that right? Huh? Yes, yeah, Sulaika. Then, kind of at her low point in dealing with cancer again. And how did you? How did this come to you? Or how did you find this story and decide that this was something you wanted to tell? Um. So John did the score for uh, this film, the first wave that I made about COVID in New York, and we got to know each other, and we we're having dinner one night, and he was telling me about American Symphony, which was a you know planned uh symphonic his first planned sym symphonic work at Carnegie Hall and at that point the you know the the film was just gonna be sort of a process film about documenting um the making of the symphony and then you know as I said life life intervened and um these these two massive you know life occurrences happened and and so mm -hmm. uh the film sort of shifted before I'd even started filming yeah did, did you have a lot of experience um dealing with firsthand with people who have cancer or had you had any sort of interactions to know, to see a cancer patient in action, so to speak? <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, my father battled cancer for most of my life. Um, and he, uh, was actually treated at the same hospital that, that Sulaika was treated at and his life was, was saved by an experimental treatment, um, there. So, uh, it was both, you know, familiar to me and also, you know, quite emotional to, to document, um, obviously not my father, but, um, you know, being back in those halls and in and, and, and that space, you know, felt, um, obviously so like it's quite unique and their ex experience is unique, but it also felt quite familiar. It was, it was really interesting how, um, the way you showed two creatives and how they use their talents and their creativity to get through or to, to do well in that. I mean, could you talk a little bit about that? I mean, cause that's something we kind of um, promote here is using like humor and writing to cope with cancer. And it really seemed like that was seen by both of them in different ways. And could you talk a little bit about you, how they use their creativity to kind of deal with where they were at in their lives at the point you were video or you were recording? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the beautiful things about John and Suleika, you know, I've, I've never really seen two human beings navigate um, hardship or challenges with such grace uh, and empathy as they as they do and as they did uh, while while shooting this film, you know. And I think in their own words, they use art, creativity as a survival mechanism. Um, to to navigate these difficult moments, and I think, obviously, you know, you know, far better than I, but you know, almost everyone has been touched by cancer in in, in some way, and and so I think, yes, of course, 
people this will resonate with with those who've been touched by cancer but i also feel feel like the film we're living in a really difficult moment right now and i think there's a lot of sort of existential dread of uh both the state of the world and and perhaps what's going to come what's to come and and so i feel like the film also sort of provides this roadmap of just dealing with with yeah difficult moments and difficult things yeah no that really came through i mean it was it was nice the way you did it i mean I, I personally have seen a lot of like documentaries or real life films and they um see, always seem to like interject themselves and it felt like you stepped back and you really were just letting them be in in the moments and it just was really beautiful um and it's it's something I know our viewers will enjoy once once they see it too um did it teach you anything about cancer um you know seeing it so up close and I mean, did did you learn anything new about or any new emotions or any new things about cancer from just seeing, um, you know, Suleika go through that? I mean, I learned a ton. Yeah, I mean, I, I never, I, I, I don't know anyone who's gone through a bone marrow transplant and, and to to see, um, just yeah, what it did to her body and 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 it was kind of remarkable the the strength and the fortitude that she had while going through this and um you know it's it also a part of the film of course is up you know seeing it from the caregiver's perspective mm -hmm. and 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 seeing how they both supported each other during this moment i mean she'd been through this once before uh, almost a decade earlier um and so i think she learned a lot through that experience learned a lot about herself, learned a lot, a lot about the world, learned a lot about what she needed to, to make it through. Uh, and so I think she, she was armed with a lot of tools that helped her navigate this, this second round of, of, you know, going through a bone marrow transplant, do a bone marrow transplant. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Did it start out, you know, you said that life kind of just presented itself. Did it, did it, start off because it, it it also kind of reads not only about them and what they're dealing with but also kind of a love story um did did it start out being that or did, is that something that just evolved as 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 you filmed i think i always wanted it to be a love story i always saw it as such um but you know when i was 21 years old a mentor of mine said if if you end up with the story you started with then you weren't listening along the way I think that's good advice for life. It's good advice for filmmaking. You know, don't be dogmatic. Be open to the story changing. And this story certainly had many twists and turns along the way. Um, so I don't, I don't like go into it with sort of a goal in mind, but, but I definitely saw the potential mm -hmm. of this being a love story. However, Suleika did not want to be part of the film. When we mm -hmm. first started filming, uh, she was quite reticent about, you know, she's obviously very smart. She's her, you know, a storyteller herself. Um, she, you know, she's a best-selling author. She wrote an amazing book, Between Two Kingdoms. She had a, you know, a blog and a, you know, video blog on uh, for the New York Times, and so, you know, she didn't want to be the sick antidote to John's success. She didn't want to be the sick wife in this story, mm -hmm. and so it took a lot of conversations and trust building to sort of walk her through. Um, both my intentions and, and and how I planned to go about shooting and making this film. And, mm -hmm. you know, there was the intimacy that you see in the film isn't just something that, you know, naturally happens. Yeah. I don't think any human being naturally would want to be on camera, let alone filming 12, 14, 16 hours a day, seven days a week, which is what we did, mm -hmm. um, let alone while you're confronting uh, death and going through a bone marrow transplant and so um i owe we owe so much to them for the courage that they had to to open themselves up in such an unbelievably vulnerable and intimate way uh during this tough time mm -hmm. did did you learn anything from them um you know about the end did, did they teach you anything i mean i think that quote that i said about sort of don't, not being dogmatic and be open to the story changing is is something that I like. I'm not a religious person, but I religiously believe in that, mm -hmm. both as a way of living life and, as I said, a way of making films. And that sort of improvisational outlook on life is 
was just the sort of perfect pairing with John and Suleika. I mean, they're they're two master improvisers, both in their art and in, in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just it was fun to dance dance with them. And I think we all sort of shared this belief that you know magic can exist behind every door. You just have to open it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a fun it's a fun way of living life and and it's a and so yeah it just was it was really fun sort of dancing with them through this through this period and so um what do, and then it's kind of the reverse i mean what do you hope that we get from it like that those who watch this you know what do you hope we walk away from and thinking about um you know john and you know suleika what did you take away from it <laughs> I mean, I took away that, you know, like this perseverance and this and the importance of love and really just um, and never giving up, but that life is hard. Um, I thought it was really poignant when you showed John going through some anxiety and talking to his therapist. I thought that was really good because that's something a lot of us, especially in the cancer community, deal with. And it's like that, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to make this happen? And I really, so that resonated with me for sure. And so, um, and that wasn't even from the, you know, the cancer perspective. I think those lessons are good for all of us, as you said earlier, you know, that there's lessons. So those are some of the things I got from it. And I just really walked away feeling like it's not easy to live life, but it's worth living, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's so easy in documentaries to put things on a platter for people and, and life it just is not black and white. Life is gray mm -hmm. and we're all complex organisms meandering through this earth. And yeah. it's a bright light on me. Um and so yeah, I hope a thousand different people take a thousand different things away from this film. I think obviously I'm sure your audience will be quite touched by Sue like a story and 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 um, as you said, her the perfect perseverance that she had and and John had and that they had together, um, and their beautiful love for each other. Um, but you know, it's also a story about the creation and and art, and mm -hmm. um, it's a story about fame and rising. You know, how does one deal with fame? How does one, you know, because John not only at the beginning of the film was nominated for eleven Grammys, but um, ended up winning five Grammys during, you know, sort of halfway through filming and, and it was obviously changed his life. It was, a, it was a, it was sort of a career altering moment. Yeah. Um, they also got married while we were filming. I mean, there's a, a lot of huge, big moments that happened. Uh, some to them individually, some to them together. Um, and so, yeah, I think each one of these sort of touch, you know, moments was a moment of growth. And I think mm -hmm. they they, view, they really view whatever it is, the highs or the lows as, as, as moments of, to you know, embody growth and to feel growth and to learn from these moments as opposed to just letting them, um, you know, push you around or, or dictate what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, um, I also thought, because, um, you know, we kind of, we definitely touch on humor given our name humor beats cancer but um i found it delightfully humorous in a, in a way that the whole sledding scene because you know here is um here's this couple and like they're both going through big things and i mean john's getting ready to do this huge symphony thing and sledding was his big fear and he was like and so I, I thought that was a cute moment and i really enjoyed that and it showed the relationship too were there any other um, humorous situations that occurred or things that kind of surprised you, made you chuckle or anything like that? I know this is a very serious story, but I just was curious. I mean, I, I, I think there's tons of funny moments in the movie. Um, yeah. You know what? I, I assume you probably watched it at home. I don't know if you watched with with, with whomever, whom, whom you watched it with, but um, you know, in most screenings in theaters, you know, there's some like laugh out loud mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. Um, and John's a pretty goofy guy. <laughs> yes, um, and, and they they're pretty cute together. So uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'd say there's 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 at least ten ten funny moments in the movie. Um, you know, this I think the sledding probably gets the the most laughs. Yeah, uh, just because he's like a 
you know, he's a, a genius auteur, uh, you know, master musician who's who's never been sledding before. Um, right. right. You know, and, and I think, but it's it's also interesting, you know, that 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 scene is about has many many you know um, shades to it. And I think part of it is also. You know, she like she like is quite adventurous, and mm-hmm. and and you you feel that adventurous spirit in her in that scene. Um, you see the sort of fortitude and the strength that she has, not just in confronting cancer, but just life. I mean, she wanted to be a war correspondent before her first um, round of of cancer, and you know, I think I think that that sort of mentality and ethos mm-hmm. is, is part of who she is. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, that that definitely came across, and. And then, you know, in terms of other scenes I found, not humorous, but kind of an example of life was, I mean, it seemed that the the sound went out at the symphony um, during, towards the beginning of the symphony. And, and he had to kind of riff a little bit, it seemed like, until they got the sound going. And I thought that was super interesting and like sh- shows that life, life is life. And it's not always like, you know, it's not going to always work out exactly how you planned it or rehearsed it a gazillion times. And I found that that's like a good lesson for us too, as cancer patients, that it really is about that. It's about, you know, the the quick pivots in life. And so I thought that was, a, that was a really interesting scene. And I'm, I know it wasn't, it didn't, it, it wasn't meant to happen that way. <laughs> and so that was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a scene earlier in, in the first act of the film when John is talking to his one of his best friends, and he, you know, he's worried. Um, you know, is he? Am I going to crack? He's worried about is his right. gonna crack him? is is life going to crack him? Is the symphony going to crack him? And and so that that is like part of the sort of like the weight through the film is like is this is this man going to crack? And you know, so I think that that final scene at the you know at Carnegie Hall when he's perform you know performing American Symphony, and the power goes out, you know, it just was such a character moment. Like like, some human beings would have freaked out. Some would have walked off stage. Some would have you know I don't know. There's a multitude of ways in which he he could have confronted that, and he he confronted it with a smile, mm-hmm. and he improvised as he as he does so naturally, and so. Um, you know, and similarly, me backstage, like everyone on my crew was freaking out, like, what's happening? What do we do? What do we do? And I was like, this is great. You know, this, <laughs> is, this is what life has thrown us. So let's, let's embrace it. Um, and as you know, it's, to me, it's one of the most beautiful moments in the movie. So. It is, it is. No, it really, because I'm, and you also had this, oh, you know, fuck, what are we going to do? You know, and like, it was very, and like all that preparation, but it was so beautiful. And um, yeah, I, I, I would wished I could see the whole thing I have to see you know there's something online you know that to see it because it seemed like such a beautiful symphony with all these different you know types of music and from different cultures and like it was just something you don't always see in like a in Carnegie Hall or whatever and so yeah I thought that was great um so any anything else you want to say about it or anything any other life lessons you learned or um what's next for you too? Those are a couple of questions to throw at you. Um, yeah. Any, anything else you want to say about this one and what's up for you next? Um, no, I think, I think we covered a lot of, a lot of ground here. Um, and thank you for, for having me on. I'm, 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 I'm about to do a big TV series um, about a woman who it's a narrative series with, with actors um, based on true story about a woman who infiltrates a white supremacist group um so uh totally different type of story and that's part of what i love about what i do is that every you know year or two dive into a new pond and swim around and exploring the human condition so i feel very honored to do what i do it's a i I view it as a huge responsibility um to tell stories and to tell people's stories and um i'm just grateful that i'm able to do so so thank you for for having me on oh sure no no i'm sure everybody's gonna really enjoy it um hearing this but also I'm hoping this will encourage even more people to watch it but it, it's it's doing really well it seems like you've um you're up for a bunch of awards for it I believe for is it or am I, am I, am I making that up or am I manifesting that instead <laughs> no yeah we're, we're we're uh 
We're doing okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> well, congratulations. Um, it's beautiful. Um, and I hope others will will watch it, particularly from Humor Beats Cancer. So thank you for taking time out and 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 talking with us. Awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Okay, bye.